All right, welcome to this segment. Um, in the previous class, I think I went at length to discuss virtual devices. And of course, um, we're going to be teaching you how to answer questions with them very soon. Okay, so um, let me pick literary terms and talk about the literary terms used in drama. Okay, literary terms. Okay, please take note that these lectures are not in totality a hundred percent of all you need. You need to do an extensive research. I'll need you to, you can go on sparknotes.com for those of you. Um, sparknotes.com um, You can find one or two materials useful there. Um, you can search, use the Google search engines and you can find some interesting material on this. And of course, textbooks also can collaborate whatever you've learned here. Okay, so literary terms in drama. Okay, drama itself has a definition. Drama is the enactment of life on a stage. Okay, the enactment of life on stage. Okay, so in some textbooks you see play. In some, you see drama. Okay? And you go ahead to be told that play and drama are the same thing. Of course they are. Um, but in form, in terms of form, they are quite different. Okay? Play is one written. Okay? And performed. Why drama is one written to be read. Okay? That is why drama is written to be read. Why play is written to be performed. Are you with me? So, when it is performed, this one has action. This one is being read. Okay? Um, I hope you understand what we call a closet drama. Closet drama. That's the kind of drama you sit in your room to read. Okay? Now, having said this, drama is the enactment of life on stage, meaning acting life on stage. Okay? Now, but the truth of the matter is that, the truth of the matter is that, in this drama, we can go on and on about it without understanding the details. What will give us insight of the details of drama is the literary terms. Okay? I'll have examples. I'll just list some here. Green Room, Proscenium Arc, Crash Door, Prompter, Character, Slash Characterization, Action, Actor, Stage, Director, Costume, Yes, Props, Casts, Cast and Crew, Dialogue, Aside, Mind, Epilogue, Dialogue, Okay? Uh, does a machine um, okay let's touch this quickly because of time the rest will come along green room the green room okay the green room is the place where actors go in to change their dresses okay and to wait to be called on stage Okay, some other people call it the lounge, okay, but the green room is that place where actors go to change their dressings and wait to be called on stage. Okay, now, having said that, we come to proscenium act. In the standard stage, when you have the diagram of a central stage and of a standard stage, you discover that your stage is divided in nine places. Okay, the closest to the wall, this is the audience, the audience here, this place is called the downstage, the one closest to the wall, this is the place where action takes place and this is the audience. So what you have here is downstage left, this is downstage center, this is downstage right. What you have here is center stage left 
center 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 stage right now the one close to the audience is called up stage so this is up stage right no left this is up stage center this is up stage right now you see this place here it's called proscenium i think it's i yes ah. Now, the purpose of this proscenium act is for actors to step to this place, to say something to the audience that they don't want other characters on stage to hear. Let me give an instance. When you're making an aside, an aside is a statement that you say. Are you getting what I'm saying? To the audience. The audience can hear you, but other characters on stage cannot hear. For instance, imagine a son and his mother. And then the mother is saying, Tunde, what are you doing there? He says, I have a cup in my hand. He says, so what do you want to do? I don't know where to put it. And then the mother says, rubbish. Put it on my head. Don't forget they're on stage. The boy can turn aside and says, I don't even know the kind of mother I have. She cannot make a direct advice. She's always sarcastic. And then the mother says, are you, what are you saying? He says, no, 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 nothing. And then he says, better. The audience heard it, but she did not hear it. That kind of statement is called an aside. But you see the proscenium act. That is where they have to stay to make such statements. Another usefulness of this proscenium act is when you have a story whereby you need a chorus or narrator. No, a chorus. A chorus is a character in a play or a drama. That chorus is not, he is not part of the story. The events that are happening in the story did not concern him or does not concern him. But he has knowledge of everybody in the story. He can tell you what this person is going to do next. He can tell you what will happen next. Some of you don't get a picture of what I'm saying. Just imagine someone coming out and saying, my name is Shegun, the wise speaker. I'm a storyteller. I told my stories to kings in their palaces, to fishers by the riverbanks, and to farmers on their farmlands. Take a seat. Listen for posterity's sake. These things that I'm about to say to you, let us together go on this journey of soul searching. Akande is the man we focus on tonight. He is the definition of evil. The guy will leave the stage. Then the action will start. You now see the Akonde will come out. You can stretch. Oh, then you know that's Akonde. Where is my food, woman? Everywhere is scattered. I want my food now. And the wife rushes to him. My husband, the food is almost ready. What? Go! Pity one. Now, that guy who told us about before we saw him, before we met him. That guy is the chorus. He will still come back. Maybe when the story has got to the heighting point. He's following the story the way you are following the story. He knows the story in total. But he is not part of the story. He is quite different from the narrator. Where is it? It's quite different from narrator. The narrator is always involved in the story. He's only narrating his experience. So you see the girl crying to the stage. <laughs> if I had known that this is what Shagun is going to do to me, and you know Shagun's are bad, I would never have believed the word he said. Ah! I, who used to be very wealthy, am now treated with scorn and disgrace behind the bars of a prison yard. Ha! Shegun! 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 Light will go off. They want to start explaining what happened. So, the lady at interval, the story, the light will come back on her, she'll say, and so, he told me to bring the particulars of my house. I believed him because I was in love. This was what happened. The story will leave her again and show her when the thing was happening. So, in that case, she's the narrator. 
She's part of the story. But the chorus knows the story, but he is not a part of the action. Nothing happened to him in the story. He just knows the story and every other character. Do you understand what I'm driving at? Alright, so I mentioned the Prosinium Act and I used that opportunity to explain a lot of other things. So in the Prosinium Act, whoever is narrating or whoever the chorus is, this is where they stay. The main actors stay on this side. Do you understand? Okay, now we come to Crash Door. Crash Door is used to exit. Whenever we talk about Crash Door, if you have ever watched a live production on stage, you will see that when the husband talks to the wife, really, is this what you do? This is how you come and go without even bothering to check on me? Huh? And then he turns back and is entering into a place you think is the room. He will just go back to and enter through one door. That door is called a crash door. But when you want to show that somebody is coming to visit them from the, maybe from another village, you know you cannot show the person coming out from this door. It's not possible. You will show the person coming from this side, right? You see, the place that person will follow into the stage, maybe the, the road, like the staircase, that always leads on top of the stage. We call it the gangway. The gangway. The gangway. So, we have the gangway on both right and left. Then we have the crash doors, depending on the story you are telling. So, crash door is usually used to leave the stage, to exit the stage, without going into the audience. That's what you call it, the crash door. Now, prompter. Prompter, this guy, his own job is to stay under a particular cloth, a black cloth. He's to wear black on black and cover himself with black with the script, the script of the story that you're trying to read, I mean to act. So he reminds the actors that are on stage of their lines or what they want to say if they forget on stage. Let me give an instance. Imagine that same story I mentioned that time. Just imagine someone saying, Hey! So this is how you like to come and go without having to check on me, right? Huh? That's what he's supposed to say, and then you should walk out. This guy probably he has eaten enough ever, and he's on stage, heavy. And then he starts. So, this is how you come and you go. Eh? You know, that's not what it's supposed to be. Supposed to be this is how you come and go without bothering to check on me. He has forgotten that part. Now, he knows where the prompter is. He will act as though it's part of You don't know the storyline. So, it will look as though it's still part of the story. That part that he can't remember, he will just be improvising. When we say improvise, he will just be thinking of other things to do till he goes to the prompter. Ah, you are getting me angry. Ah, he's already getting close to the prompter. Now, the prompter can say, Without bothering, without bothering to check on me. Now he has reminded him, right? So the prompter is that person who is present on stage but hidden from the audience. He tells the actors the lines they might have forgotten while they are on stage. That's the job of a prompter. Have you explained chorus? Chorus is that guy who knows everything about the story. It could be a man, it could be a woman who knows everything about the story, telling us the story, but they are not part of the action. Nothing in the story happened to them. Do you get it? Why the narrator? Is another person in the story, or is a character that the story happened to that is explained. Now, narrator could be one, it could be two. You could have two people narrating, you could have one person narrating. Okay? Like in the case of husband and wife, who are trying to talk about how their son implicated them. Of course, there are the narrators in the story, and of course, they are going to be able to, they are going to have to narrate all that happened. Gangway already explained. That's the way people listen passage into the stage. Then, we come to character. Character talks about um, the role played by each person. Okay, if I'm playing the role of chief, that's my character. If I'm playing the role of chief, that's my character. Okay, so the role that someone plays in the story or in the drama is the character of the person. There's a difference between character and character. Character is the behavior of a person on a normal day. Character is a person in a story. Do you get that? It's a person in a story. The two pronunciations are different. There's character and there's character. Okay? Character. Okay? Is the one we're using it. Then character. No, sorry. Character is the one we use in uh, literature. Why character is the behavior of a person. That's your character. That's where you behave. So character is someone in a story. Okay? Action. When we talk about action, 
This is the series of movements, okay, of activities that passes message across. Action is a series of activity or movement following a storyline that tells us the story. Actor is that person that participates or plays a role in a story. Stage, this is the place where action takes place. That's a stage. Now, script, this is a document that contains what every person is supposed to say in a drama or in a play. Director, this is the person that gives direction about the movements and the behavior of people on stage. Let me give an instance. Character and characterization. If I'm playing the role of a chief, my character in the story is chief. But characterization now tells us how I now play that role. Let me give an instance. If I'm supposed to play the role of a chief with pot belly, you know right now I don't have pot belly. All they need to do is create that character for me. They have to characterize me to be able to be or to look like that chief. So when they are putting clothes inside my under, uh, under the clothes and making it look like I have tummy, when they give me glasses, when they put uh, kango, this um, face cap that uh, all these professors normally use with glasses, and then they put shirt and put bow tie, and they give me shorts, a nika, to wear, right? And they put long socks. You can see the picture, and I have to talk in a particular way. Uh, good day, students. You see that? That's not the way I talk on a normal day. This is the way I talk. But when I'm on stage and I want to take the character of that chief, the way that chief will behave, the way the chief will eat, the way we talk, my ability to do that is called characterization. Do you get that? So the character is chief. The characterization is now the way he's doing. He, uh, ignorance, don't die, I'm okay. That is, it's ignorance that is worrying you. Um, by the time the class is over, I want all of you to pass across your notes. You see that kind of mannerism, that kind of reaction, that's characterization. The way an actor plays the role that has been given to him, such that it shows the behavior of that character. Okay, then we come to costume. Uh, this one refers to the clothes, worn by each of the characters to depict their personality. You can't expect, if a doctor is coming up on stage and he's putting on singlet and shorts and he's doing a liar, a liar, we are trying my family, we are the fiber, doctor, doctor, he can't fiber anything. Okay? But when he walks in, you see his clothes, white, all white, and there's a stethoscope on his neck, and the guy is there, and he's looking at you and he's saying that, tonight, we decide, whether this woman is pregnant or not. And the music, drum beats is rolling on the background. Bring her out now! And then they bring the, the girl out. And the father is saying, yes, test her now. And they carry out the test. And the girl is not pregnant. The doctor's opinion is what they will need. But we need to see something in order for us to know. Sometimes they might say the character should be a quack doctor. And then you see the doctor will enter with anger. Right? That anger, you place the anger probably on the neck of the person or on the palm, and he says he's doing his test. And he says, How do you know the result? He says, I don't worry. If the anger vibrates in my hand, I know that she's pregnant. Not vibrate, that she's not pregnant. How? I'm the only one that knows. That does not depict a doctor, it depicts a quack doctor. So, depending on what role you are playing, depending on the characterization, that's what determines the clothes you wear or your costume. Props. This refers to things we can move around on stage, like table, chair, telephone, all of those things that are added to the background of a stage to tell us where the action is happening. If you want to show reception or office, for instance, you have to put a table, you put a, uh, maybe a telephone on top, you put files on top, right? And then maybe a computer system or laptop. We already know that's a reception. You get that. So those things that we can move around that are not one, those things we can move around, like if you want to show a ballist, are you getting it or a chief priest? There's one thing they hold in their hand. All those things that can be moved around, those things are called props. Do you get that? Now cast and crew. Cast refer to a list of everybody. Okay? 
who are playing the role of the other in the story. Whether you're a waka paso, or you're somebody you're a round character, or a flat character, anything at all that you have played in the story, you are under the cast. Crew are those people, okay, that actually are behind the scene, who are making, once you finish a scene and you need to remove chair, that's a stage manager. That person runs and he takes the chair. If microphone is not working well and people cannot hear the back, that person that repairs the microphone, sound person, right? It's part of the crew. So crew are those people that work manually behind the scene to make sure that the action reaches the audience. Dialogue. This is the exchange of words, the words that are exchanged between two characters on stage. Okay? Aside. Aside is a statement that a character makes on stage. The audience can hear it, but other characters on stage cannot hear it. Maybe someone just runs like, ah, my bestie, friendship me. Hey, as you come, you say, oh, oh, which kind of unfortunate human being be this? And then the guy gets there and says, ah, my friend, what are you saying? He knows nothing. The audience have heard, but he or she hasn't heard. Do you get that? So that statement that you say to one side is an aside. Okay? Mind. This is when you are acting and there is no word. You are acting. This one is always very difficult for audience to interpret, okay? But people always use costume to depict it. For instance, let's imagine somebody who is pregnant. They put clothes on her for whatever she's wearing and they tie it. And she's doing like, mm. they're not saying anything, but she's doing, mm, mm. then another person enters with a white apron and stethoscope in his hand. Or maybe nurses, the dress. They don't need to say anything. You know that, they, okay, the lady is pregnant. She has got to the hospital. Then doctor comes, tests her, and then doctor says, he does like this, they push the woman somewhere or they put clothes on her, and they are saying, push, or probably there's nothing coming out. She's saying, then the baby comes out. You know it by that, that okay, she was pregnant, she got to the hospital, doctors are not satisfied to her, now she's been delivered of a baby boy or baby girl. So, such a story where there is no action, I mean, there's no speaking, nobody's talking, but action is going on on the background. It's called what? A mind. Now let's go to monologue. Monologue is talking about a long speech made by one person. Are you getting it? From beginning to the end without interruption. Once someone interrupts you, that's no longer a monologue. Okay, let me give you an example. If you've ever seen a story or a movie or anything where a pastor is talking, or maybe the principal of a school. Good morning, students. I say good morning. That's not yet a monologue. My attention has been drawn to some unscrupulous elements who have been disturbing this school. From the founding days of our founding fathers, we have not had a record of any student who has left the premises of the school to scale the fence to go into town just to buy food. And I want to say that some students here will be dealt with this morning and this should serve as a note of warning. Especially to SS. You see, the story is already getting long. And at the end of it all, once the principal is gone, it switches to the next action and the other actions continue. Or maybe a pastor. You, you want to show a church in most of, especially Nigerian movies. Eh? You can use that space to advertise and do other things. You show one pastor. We talk. Pastor, they can want to show church. Pastor can talk for almost 20 minutes. Nobody will interrupt the pastor. Inside drama. That's a very long speech. That's for monologue. If, if the pastor is talking in a drama, people don't interrupt them. They talk and talk and talk, and once they are done, they move to the next thing. Okay? So, monologue is a long speech made by one character on stage that is not what interrupted. Epilogue. Of course, you know what epilogue and uh, prologue. Epilogue and prologue. When we say epi, this means end. Pro means beginning. So, epi, uh, prologue is a short writing before the story starts. Okay, if you watch Israeli Chinese movies, Jet Li and uh, Jackie Chan, they love to do it a lot. Before their movies start, you now write something, or you just hear one man you start talking in the background. In the time of King Uzagazi in the Mongolian Empire. All of those things, the story has not started though. In fact, it's very possible that the story is going to come and start in modern day setting. 
You now take you back to the story of maybe ancient times, maybe 70, 80 something. At the end of the day, you now say, and so this powerful and wicked leader came to power and has been in the ring since then till now. They can just show the location on the streets, maybe in China. Cars will be hungry. So you can see the link between that old time and now. So that old time narration is what we call prologue. If you have ever seen um, Kunle Afolayon's figurine, figurine is another movie that has prologue that is very interesting. Okay, in figurine, the story started by saying that um, long time ago, when Araro Mire wanted to come to the earth, she had to be brought forth from the bark of an old and cursed tree. Now, a god, right, wanted to come to the head so that people would worship it. It spoke to the chief priest that the chief priest should carve a tree. As he's carving the tree, he should carve it in shape of a woman and that it will enter into that sculpture and people will come. So, they said it rained and rained the night when Araro Miri was sculptured. Villagers came from far and near to touch the feet of Araro Mire. The touching of the feet means seven years of plenty and it is followed by seven years of disaster. The villagers have had enough. They came to the shrine, killed the chief priest and burnt the goddess Araro Mire. The day Araro Mire and her wickedness was no more, they said it rained. Um, so they've given you introduction. Have you not watched some movies where the story will just show someone running at the beginning? This is your Nigerian video. Someone will be running from beginning to beginning. At the end of the day, you just see that it was a dream. The guy don't wake up and then you now start writing names. They just want to start. So all those things are prologue. If you pick up a novel and you want to read, there's always something you first write at the beginning, like a short story that introduces you to the main story. That's prologue. Epilogue comes at the end. You watch some movies to a point where you'll be asking yourself, have they finished this movie? In fact, a lot of Nigerian movies are like that. You watch it to a point and you'll say, to God be the glory. It's only in Nigerian movies I see, to God be the glory. I've not seen any American film or Indian film that they finish and they say, to God be the glory, and they appreciate it with death and hospital and a supermarket. I've not seen. Okay? And so, ep ep epilogue comes at the end. You just see, so, Johnson married blessing. Together they moved to the United States and Shedu was punished for his fraud. The end. You see that right there? That's called Epilogue. Okay? Those a machina. That's, I'm rounding off on this. Those a machina talks about a supernatural intervention in a story whereby the situation has become so critical that no human being can help. For instance, um, the gods are not to blame. Paola wrote to me. Um, you remember there's a part where Bunka. Bunka was asked to take the child, the child that the prophecy said will kill his father and marry his mother. When the prophecy came out, Bunka was given the job to go and dump the child in the evil forest so that animals would eat him up. But in the process, he met a farmer who has been barren or the wife has been barren. They have no child. He said he will take the child in. And he will take the child far away to seven leagues of villages away from this. So Bunka thought of it in his wisdom that the child might not come back. But of course, you know what happened. But when those emotional comes in is, the child is about to be killed. And then intervention happens. Do you get that? Or probably a woman has been tied to a stick and she's about to be killed. Why they raise the cutlass to cut her? Animals just rush out from the forest, attacking people. And the animals were going their own and everybody had to be disaster. And while they were running away, it's obvious that maybe one hunter was trying to kill one of the animals. And then he comes out, sees the woman, cuts her loose, and takes her home. Family marries her eventually. So when you have a situation whereby it's a dead end and there's no, uh, what do you call it, nobody to help, and a divine intervention comes, that's those a machine. So I'll see you guys in the next class.